All right, this is part two of three, and we're going to go over duality and simplification today. So, what is duality? Well, it's very simply, you change all your zeros to ones, as dictated by this arrow, and all your pluses to dots, or all your ors to ands, and vice versa. So, this is just a simple example of how to make a function x or y into its dual. You take this little plus sign, it's also called or, and you make it into and, or a little dot and it becomes xy. You guys have to be careful though. f is not equal to f dual. But then why would we do it? Well, it actually can help you simplify things a lot and very effectively as shown by this guy over here. So, it tells you to simplify this equation right here and there's a bunch of steps, but I'll go through it, no worries. So looking at this, I actually can't even see a way to simplify it. So I decided to take the dual of it and you see this little dot becomes a positive, this little dot becomes a positive, this positive becomes a dot or becomes multiplied, as do all of these. And remember when I say dot and positives, I actually mean ands and ors, just keep that in mind. The next thing I do is I take a common factor. As you can see, um, this d and this d are common factors of these two terms. So I factor out the d and I have a bar plus or a naught or a. Now, if you don't remember, here's the basic laws. And over here it says x or x naught is equivalent to 1. So if I go back over here, this is the same thing as x or x, sorry, not x or x. So we can simplify that to 1. And then you have d plus ab. Now if you, if you leave your answer as that, you're wrong because we're working with f dual. Not, not dual, this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh, f dual. So you gotta switch it back. And to switch it back, same thing. You make your dots positives, you make your positives dots, and then I just expanded and got that answer. So if I didn't take the duel, I'd probably cry and hate my life a little, but it's okay, I took the duel. Next, we're gonna go over simplification. There's four rules that he suggested knowing by heart, and these are the four. First thing is simplification. All it states is, oh, I don't know what happened there. All it states is x or x and y is equivalent to x. This is a rule, and it can, have, it can have many, many different forms, but try to be careful. Over here, as you can see, that this is equivalent to a and b. It might be a bit confusing, but the constant term is x, and the y term is everything in green. Again, this is actually the exact same equation, different variables, so just keep, keep, keep in mind. Next thing is absorption. This is x or x naught and y is x or y. Um, you can take it for face value or you can just look at the proof I have over here. Again, this is do with duals. So again, duals are very useful. First thing you do when you take the duals, you make your positives into dots and your dots into positives. And then I just use distributive factor. So I did x times x naught and x times x y to get these two values x and x naught is zero. I believe it's in the basic laws as well. Over here. And then if that's zero, you're only left with x, y. And to make f again, you redual it. So you have the dot turns into a positive. Hence, this is true. And it's a very simple equation. If you memorize, you don't have to do this, all this junk every time you decide to get to that rule. It's kind of nice. The swap rule it's uh, you just take it at face value. The explanation is kind of long. All you do is switch. Um, if a is paired with b in an or statement and a is a not is paired with c in an or statement and they're being added together, all you do is you switch the two constants together. So a b, a now goes with c and b now goes with a not. The last one is the consensus rule. This rule is a bit tricky. I will do the explanation later, or you can take a face value, whatever you choose, and it states that A and B, or B and C, or C and A not, this guy over here, is equivalent to A not B and, sorry, A and B, or A not, oh my god, I erased it, I erased it, hold on, there we go, That's that looks better. Now, the explanation, it, it might freak you out a little bit. Um, it is a bit confusing, but it does come with practice, but I'll try my best to explain it. The function is the function, and the first thing I do 
is I try to factor. Well, if you know, if you notice, you can only factor these two guys or these two guys. But that would get you absolutely nowhere because then you're stuck. So what I try to do is I try to create a common factor between all the terms. And all of them share an A value or an A naught value. Except this one. So what I try to do is I try to give this one an A naught and an A value. Well to do that, I just added, well not add, I added it with A or A naught. But you can't just do that, you can't just add random things to it. Well, remember, X is just 1X and X A is just 1X A. So all I did was made BC equivalent to 1 BC and 1, as we know, is the same thing as X plus X naught. That is a bit confusing, but the more you do it, the easier it comes. After doing that, I just expanded, and then I have the simplification rule. Yes, I know, we're using simplification, simplification rule and the consensus rule. And I highlighted the common terms, so you can get rid of this guy, and you can get rid of this guy. So what you're left with is A and B, or A not C. And these are the four rules you might, I highly suggest, memorizing or understanding how to derive them. And finally, we have the XOR and the XNOR. Well, these equations you never have to memorize because they're self-derivable. I have it all worked out here, but I'll do it again. So, I have the truth table to the left, and I have stuff in red, and I have stuff in blue. Everything that's in zero, I will consider not. So this is A not, sorry, A zor B not and this is A or B naught as well. And these two are just the truth values, these are A or B. Knowing that, knowing this is A, this is A naught, this is B, that's B naught, and this is B, and that's B naught, let, let, let's make some stuff up. Well, not literally make it up, but let's do some stuff. So, you have A, this guy over here, and B, this guy over here, makes A or B not. All right, then you have, let's do this one. Oh, if it's a zero, it's an A not and B not. Again, is the exact same thing. Since you know these two are equivalent, one could say A and B or A not B not is equivalent to A or B not. All right, and now let's do the blue one. Where So again, let's take this guy and this guy. So A not B is equivalent to A zor B. And over here, you have A and B not turns into A zor B, dear God. Oh my God, all right, there we go. <laughs> um, right, and if these are equivalent, one could say, that A not B or A B not is equivalent to A Zor B. That covers part two of three, and next we'll be going over clarity. Clarity. <laughs> we'll be going over parity on part three of three.